Well, good morning again, dear saints. Blessed February to you, the 6th of February today as we gather. The psalm for today, Psalm 77, we continue in the Gospel of St. John today in the second half of the first chapter. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Well, the psalm for today. I cry aloud to, the, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out. With wearying, my soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever, in, forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your works and meditate on your mighty deeds. You, with your arm, have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. There are times in all of our lives when we when we feel like God isn't here, he isn't hearing, he isn't answering, he isn't helping, whatever it might be, the situation you're in, in is dire. And, and like the psalmist, when he talks about, um, I stretch out my hand without, uh, without wearying, my soul refuses to be comforted, you know, crying out to God continually. That's where the psalmist is. You might even say there's, there's doubt here, or weak faith here, something like that. But then the psalmist says, does something here that's very, that's very wise. Instead of looking forward and saying, God, where are you? Which we can never do. We can't look into the future. He can look back and, can, and he can see clearly that God has been there. He looks back and he sees the faithfulness of God. I remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. And can simply look back maybe in his own life, but certainly in God's word and see how God is faithful. You see, for so many people, they, uh, especially as we lead into the gospel reading for today, they want to know who God is by reason, by, by mental capacity, by understanding instead of believing by faith. And what the psalmist is doing here is saying, I'm struggling right now, but I can look back through faith and I can see clearly where God was and just walk through all the biblical accounts and see where God has shown his mercy to his people. And that's what the psalmist does. That's where John is going to go in the gospel reading for today. This is the gospel of John, the first chapter. The next day again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked by and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you seeking? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. On the two, one of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So you are Simon, the son of John? You, call, uh, you shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and he said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. 
Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found the, him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Before I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. I love the gospel reading for today because it is a, a, an evangelism gospel. Not that any of them are less. But here we see clearly a method that Jesus uses to build faith. In the psalm for today, we saw the psalmist not being able to see into the future and wondering because of his situation. He looks back in the past and he sees God's faithfulness. In the gospel reading today, the beginning of the gospel, Jesus is calling disciples to follow him. So he's beginning to build these 12 that will be with him. Simon, excuse me. We have Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, and and Simon and Peter there. And then we have the story here as we go along of he found Philip and he said to him, follow me. Philip was one from the same town. And then Philip said when he found Nathanael, we have found the one we've been studying about. We have found the one that the law and the prophets point to, Jesus of Nazareth. Well, Nathanael was doubting, if you will. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, Recognizing this small town, which probably wasn't very prominent at all, Philip had doubts. Excuse me, Nathaniel had doubts. And the wonderful way that Philip handles this is he doesn't try to prove it through knowledge. He doesn't go back and quote the scriptures, which would have worked, which certainly would have built faith. He simply says to this friend of his, Nathaniel, come and see. Those are the three greatest words in evangelism. Not, well, let me prove to you from the word what will happen. Not, let me prove to you how you are wrong in what you are doing. But bringing people to Jesus. And that's what Philip does. He simply has an open invitation For Nathanael, come and see. And Nathanael, we know, goes and sees. What a great thing it is when you have a relationship with someone and you say or do the same thing. Come and see. When we look at evangelism in the church, we've studied this for years. We look at at ways that evangelism is successful. We look at what brings people into church. And overwhelmingly... The category of successful evangelism happens because you know somebody. You have a relationship with someone, a friend, a neighbor, a family member, and you simply bring them to see Jesus. That's the the way that evangelism works the best. Not um, programs, but relationships. Getting to know someone And then inviting them, and maybe it's a lifetime of inviting people, come and see. And they simply then, because they trust you, will go with you, and then you can set them at the feet of Jesus, and he will continue to teach and to preach and to build faith. Dear saints, you all have someone in your life, just like uh, Philip and Nathaniel, You have somebody you know that's asking you questions about faith and things. Maybe your response should be the same as Philip's. Come and see. Come with me to church and and see the Savior played out plainly in the word preached, in the liturgy that points us to Jesus. Come and see Jesus here 
for you in, with, and under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of sins. God does the saving. God does the faithing. God does the repenting. God does the, the, gives us the ability to believe. God does all of these things, and that all starts where we, when we are where he is. The greatest three words in any evangelism program that's out there are, come and see. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, when we look at uh, come and see, and, and who's doing the work actually of, of engaging or convincing people and giving them faith, we turn to the third article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. We pray. Father, we thank you that uh, in our lives someone has said to us or simply brought us to you that we might see your grace, your mercy, and your forgiveness. Give us strength, Father, as we uh, know others who do not have a good relationship with you, that we may continually do just what Philip did. Just simply say, come and see, and bring them to you. Father, hear us now as we put our trust in you and pray to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints... Find someone in your world today and simply invite them. Invite them to ask questions. Invite them to come and see Jesus who gives us his peace. Go in his peace. Amen.